Hi and welcome back to Big Picture Technology and Science. In this video, the fourth in the series, we will try to understand how electricity changed human's ability to create calculating machines. Machines that later became general purpose programmable computers. When I started the research for this video, I was under the impression that I understood pretty well the role that electricity plays in today's computers. But while working on it, I found out that I had a lot to learn. As always, we will try to start by tracking the history of calculating machines from its very early beginning, around 3,000 years ago. The earliest known calculating device is probably the abacus. It originated in Mesopotamia almost 5,000 years ago and spread throughout the Middle East, Europe and China. The preliminary versions of the abacus were designed to support bookkeeping related activities. Being such an efficient way to support human basic calculations of summation, multiplication and division, it is still in use today in various parts of the world. The abacus helps the user manually perform both accumulation of quantities and the handling of carry from one stage to the other. John Napier's discovery of the logarithms in the early 1600s gave way to the development of the slide rule by William Uhtred, an English mathematician around 1622. In its simplest form, the slide rule adds and subtracts length in order to calculate the total distance. But slide rules came, can also handle multiplication and division, find square roots, and do other sophisticated calculations. As the abacus, also the use of slide rules extended well beyond the 1600s. It might be surprising to know that even the Apollo program astronauts, including Buzz Aldrin in the 1969 Apollo 11 mission, carried the Pickett brand slide rules on their space missions. But perhaps the most impressive use of the slide rule was during the Apollo 13 crisis when engineers had to recalculate data to guide the crew safely back to Earth and given the limitations of the NASA computers at that time that were designed to perform very specific tasks had to revert back to their slide rules. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. Stand by, they got a problem. Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main beep up on the boat. We had a pretty large bank. We were now at the beginning of the mechanical era. The first mechanical calculator, the Pascaline, appeared in 1642. It was created by the French mathematician Blaise Pascal. Pascal's machine used geared wheels and could add and subtract two numbers directly and multiply and divide by repetition. Mechanical calculators like the Pascaline work like the ancient tabacus by the accumulating values and handling carry, but they took advantage of mechanical mechanisms such as racks, pinions, gears and levers to do so. task of designing and manufacturing a machine that could reliably perform all four operations and could be used in daily office tasks was completed by Thomas de Colmar in 1820. Thomas's arithmometer became the first commercially successful mechanical calculator and to some extent was the product that launched the mechanical calculators industry. It was manufactured from 1851 to 1915. The comptometer was next. Its main improvement was the human interface. It was the first commercially successful key-driven mechanical calculator patented by Dor Eugene Felt, an American inventor, in 1887. These digital calculating machines continued to improve and evolve with several notable developers. Charles Babbage in England invented first the difference engine and later the analytical engine both introducing novel ideas to the computing world, such as printing results, storing results for later use, and most notably, the ability to change operation based on intermediate results, later to be called conditional branching. Unfortunately, both projects ran into financial dif difficulties before their implementation was completed. 
to some extent, Charles Babbage's ideas were too advanced for his time and it took another almost 100 years until his ideas were incorporated in computing systems. Mechanical computers were not limited to the four basic arithmetic operations. During the end of the 19th century and beginning of 20th century, many more mechanical calculating machines were designed for specific, both military and civilian tasks. These analog devices incorporated new mechanical components such as the bevel differentials for performing summation and negation, and also cams that created predefined functions. Take a look at two short examples how mechanical components can perform mathematical functions. The bevel differential receives its inputs from the two pinions moving independently on its two sides. These two separate rotation angles are translated continuously into a rotation of its middle part to an angle that corresponds to the sum or difference of its inputs. Calculating via cams uses a specifically shaped curve to define the relation between the turn angle of the disk to the linear movement of the free moving pin. In this example, the reciprocal function was implemented. And finally, for implementing integrators, the more sophisticated ball and disk assembly was used. World War II fire control computers, such as the torpedo data computer, were based on such analog mechanical computing elements. They were designed to solve the problem of aiming from a moving vessel at moving targets. As you can imagine, these analog computers were very complex machines, but they were designed to solve very specific problems. Maybe the most advanced and complete mechanical analog computer was designed and built in 1930 by an engineer and scientist named Vannevar Bush at MIT. The differential analyzer computer was capable of solving differential equations using ball and disk integrator, integrators as its heart. Bush used electric motors to operate his computer, but its heart was purely analog and mechanical. And then it was electricity's turn to make a difference, and it revolutionized both digital computing machines and the analog ones. We were at the beginning of the 20th century, and some of the revolutions attributed to electricity were already, already on their way. Electricity was already distributing energy to factories. Steam engines were being replaced by electric motors. Electric relays and later vacuum tubes were invented, and telecommunications was already revolutionized with the growing network of telegraphs. And the first radio communication systems were being deployed. When it comes to computing, computers were all mechanical, some analog and some digital, but the 19th century experience suggested that digital calculating machines, though still limited to the four basic arithmetic operations, have the potential for performing much more complex mathematical tasks using logarithms and differential analysis techniques, if only the required control mechanisms be added to them. At this point, it was still not clear what value electricity can add to the computing field, besides maybe turning the wheels of the mechanical computers? For the breakthrough to happen, it took the integration of several theoretical ideas and new technologies. Boolean algebra, developed by the mathematician George Bull during the 19th century, showed it was useful both for performing arithmetic operations but also for more general logic operations. New theoretical ideas on universal computing that appeared in Charles Babbage's experimental devices and tested it in Vannevar Bush's analog computer were being formalized by an English mathematician named Alan Turing. On the technology side, the invention of the electric relay switch already proved to be highly useful in telegraph networks. It seems that all of these elements together converged in several scientists' minds. One of them was George Stibitz from Bell Labs, another was Konrad Zuss in Germany, and the third 
Howard Aiken from Harvard. Stibitz realized that the device that he was working with every day in Bell Labs on communication systems, the electric relay, could serve as the basic building block for a digital electric calculator if only com computations were due to be performed in binary. Stibitz was able to build a very basic device that adds two binary numbers out of electric relays that he borrowed from the lab. He did this on his kitchen table one night in 1937, thus naming the device Model K. This simple device that at the first glance does not seem very impressive did not impress his supervisor at the, at the lab as well, but it later proved to be the foundation for today's digital computers. Scaling the, this device up from 2 bits was rather easy and improving the technology from the slow relays to the much faster vacuum tubes gave way to revolutionary computing systems already during the Second World War. Approximately at the same time in Germany, it was Konrad Zuss who developed his own version of a digital computer, starting in his own living room with the Z1 and moving to the more sophisticated Z3 that is regarded by some as the first general purpose programmable computer. The Z3 was binary based and used electronic relays. Zuss developed a programming language for his computers, making them more accessible. At about the same time, a Harvard professor, Howard Aiken, was working on his own modern version of Babbage's analytical engine, starting with the mostly mechanical Mark I and moving gradually to the fully electronic Harvard Mark IV. World War II gave incentive to further advancements. The Colossus, used by English to decipher the German Enigma, incorporated 1800 vacuum tubes. It pioneered as being a fully electronic machine along with the American ABC at a NASA of Berry computer of Iowa College and it was certainly the most powerful device designed up to that time. But being designed for a specific task of cryptographic related calculations, it was not as programmable as the partially mechanic German Z3. Colossus was successful in its intended purpose the German messages it helped to decode provided information about German battle orders, supplies and personnel. Some claim that it shortened the war by as much as two years. The American ENIAC was also developed initially to support war activities, though its long development schedule mostly missed the war. It was a huge computer. It consisted of approximately 18,000 vacuum tubes and 1,500 relays, thus becoming the most complex electronic system built up to that time, and one of the first generation fully electronic computers, despite its 1,500 relays, along with the Colossus and the ABC. As we saw, electricity was able to transform computing from the mechanical era to the electronic era of binary computers. From here on, the computing industry started moving forward much faster, improving both the hardware and software dramatically, introducing new technologies leading to our gigahertz speed silicon-based CPUs. I hope I was able to illustrate how the 19th century mathematical ideas of George Boole with the growing expertise in mechanical computing, both digital and analog, um, of George Babbage and later Vannevar Bush, along with the new introduced uh, electronic components, the electric relay and later the vacuum tube, all of these components together integrated in the minds of three scientists, George Stibitz, Konrad Zuss, and uh, Howard Aiken to come up separately with their own versions of electromechanical uh, computers, leading later to the fully electronic computers. I hope it is clear now how the electric relay could become the building block of this new computer industry. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. Don't forget to leave your comments 
and see you in the next videos.